Hi and welcome to the APL quest. See APL wiki for details. Today's quest is the sixth problem from the 2013 round of the APL problem solving competition. It's a very simple problem, uh, just finding out the numeric range of an array, that is uh, the highest value minus the lowest value. Um, but we'll see that there is a special edge case that we need to take uh, action for, and we'll look into some generalization as well. Without further ado, uh, let's generate some data we can work on. Okay, so here's a numeric vector, and uh, the highest value is the maximum reduction of that vector and this uh, lowest value is the minimum reduction over the vector and then we can take those two values and subtract uh, the smaller from the larger and we get the full numeric range so that's really all there is to the basic problem let's put this into a function um, we can write the max reduction of omega minus the min reduction of omega. There's a redundant parenthesis here, but that's mostly just for clarity and uh, um, to make the expression symmetric. So we can try this uh, on v, and that works. Great. Now, there are a couple of problems with this. Um, one is that it has to work on any array. So let's make a matrix, which is two rows and four columns containing the same numbers as v. It looks like this. Now, if we were to apply our function here um, on M instead, then it doesn't work because it gives us the numeric range for every row. We want the numeric range for the entire array. And we can solve that by reveling the array first. So we revel it here, revel it here, um, and this gives us the full range. As we can see here, we are reveling twice, which is quite unnecessary. And we can actually, in a neat way, break this reveling out of the parentheses. So let's get rid of the revel from here and the revel from here. Um, and we can actually switch to a tacit form quite easily. So we just say the max minus the min uh, of the revel of uh, the array. Here we go. And we can get this, this even further because now we can observe that we actually have a full tested function and a top simply wrapped in a different wrapper. So we can, we can completely uh, get rid of that syntax and it still works. We can give this a name then. Let's see how that works. Of course, still works on our vector. Um, it also works on um, a scalar where the range is zero because we revel in the largest uh, minus the uh, smallest is and it's the same number so it gives zero um, so this is a good method and one method that isn't so good but it's kind of fun to look at if we take our um, our vector and do an outer product uh, but instead of multiplication we're doing an outer uh, uh, subtraction so that means it's a subtraction table that gives all the possible differences uh, between values and then the full range is then the largest number in this table so we can take the maximum of the revel of that and that gives us also the range not a good way to do it uh, but it works and we could make a function out of this by saying um, the maximum over uh, the revel of the outer uh, subtraction selfie. And in fact, this will work on our matrix as well. It just generates an even higher rank array as an intermediary step. But there's a catch. Uh, according to the example cases in the problem specification, um, the function also has to work on empty arrays and that doesn't work why doesn't it work well we can try our um, original function um, let's you go up and define that again we have it right here this was this one uh, if we try that on say the empty vector we get a domain error 
and uh, we're supposed to get a zero instead, that there, as if to say there is no range. The problem is that the maximum over an empty vector is the smallest representable number in the current uh, numeric system. So these are 64-bit floats, and this is the smallest representable 64-bit float. Why is that? Um, that is because the reduction over an empty axis gives the identity element for that operation. So for plus, the identity element is the value that you can plus with without changing anything. That would be a zero. For multiplication, what you can uh, you can multiply with is a one. And for max, the only number that you can do a max with and make sure that your original number becomes the result, so it's an identity operation, you, nothing changes, is the smallest representable number, or a negative infinity if that's uh, available. And similarly, if we do a minimum reduction, we get the max representable number. And trying to subtract uh, this very small number from this very large number goes beyond the range of uh, the floating point system that we are using. And we get a domain error. So this system doesn't quite work. How can we solve it? Well, one simple way to do it is simply to say, is our uh, array empty? Uh, we can't just compare to the empty uh, vector because there might be multiple x's. Say we could have a, a um, zero row, two column matrix of numbers, which isn't visible, but it sure exists. What we can do is that we can take its shape and there is a zero there. And if there's a zero anywhere in the shape of an array, it's called an empty array. And then the range has to be zero. So we can write this function as if zero is a member of the shape of the array, then we return zero. Otherwise, we take the maximum minus the minimum of the ravel of the array. And now we can apply this on each of our arrays, the vector, the matrix, the empty uh, vector, and why not our 0 by 2 matrix as well. And now it works. So this is a valid solution, and it's very clear. It's probably the clearest uh, solution that there is. But we can be a bit more uh, clever about this. Uh, first, for a fun solution, but not an efficient one. Um, and that is, if we sort the array first. So we let's say we start with our matrix, and then we ravel the, ma the matrix, and then we sort it. Then we know that uh, the range is the last element minus the first element. So the last element can be written as the pick atop reverse minus the first element, which is just uh, first pick. And and that works. And the reason I'm using this method for getting the first and last element is because if we try to pick the first element of an empty vector, then it coerces out a number. So that means that both of these terms would become zero. So we get zero minus zero, which is zero, and that's the correct result for the empty array. Even, uh, of course, if we have something like this, a matrix, because we reveled first, it will work the same way. So this is a solution, but not a very good one. And in order to make it a full function, uh, there are a couple of different ways we could do it. Um, we could take this tested function here and put it inside the parenthesis, but as you can see, the color changes. That is because it ceases to use the sorting idiom. So things will run a bit slower, but it works. If you want to preserve um, the speed of it, then we can just string things together uh, using an atop. Either way, it could be an atop here, or it could be an atop over here, or we can use all three of them. All of that works. All three atopped together. There are uh, cleverer ways uh, that we could do this. And for that, we need to think a little bit. Okay, so we have a matrix, and we need to ravel it. And um, then we want to have a zero if the array is empty. Okay, how can we how can we do that? So we can we can tally the reveled array and then uh, we can 
have a maximum with one. So if the array is length zero, then we get one. Otherwise, we can just get the length of the array. And then we can t use this to take from the reveled um, array again. Okay, so now here it doesn't make a difference, of course. We can see that that gives our data as we expected. If we do it on uh, the empty vector, then we end up overtaking by one, uh, and that pads with another zero at the end, and then the rest of the procedure will be the same. So we can say um, the maximum minus the minimum um, of the ravel. Uh, let's say we can write, take this whole expression here. We can write it like this. And then uh, we can go and simplify uh, things a bit. Um, we can turn all of this tacit actually. So we could ravel first, and then we could apply a function to that where we use this value, which is the length, except it becomes one, and we can take from that same thing. So this is a possibility, and now we don't need the braces anymore. But we have three functions here, so we need to atop at least uh, one place. So now we can, this works, and it works on empty arrays as well. Um, and, but there's actually um, more we could we could do. Uh, firstly, for the syntax here, and we instead of since we have three functions that we want to avoid, we uh, because of we have to do the explicit at the top. We can take this, which is a monadic function, and put inside the parenthesis as a last carriage on this train. So here is the original function we're applying. It becomes a fork right here, and then another fork, and then finally on the top with this function here. So that works as well, and gives us our results as we expect. What else can we do? Well, observe that the ravel of an array gives us all the elements in a single vector. How many elements? Well, that's the product over the length of all the axes in that array. So for our matrix, the shape is this, and that means that the product is how many elements we have. Very good. So if we um, say that there are none, so if there's any zero inside the shape, then the product is going to be zero. So we can take that the maximum of that with one, and then we can simply use that to reshape the array itself. So here, when the array is empty, we reshape the empty array into a one element uh, vector, giving us just a one element vector of, with a zero. And if we used it on, say, our matrix, uh, then this would be equivalent to reveling it. So we can put all this together and again say um, the maximum minus the minimum of the array itself reshaped by the maximum of one and the tally of uh, the array when that entire thing is reveled. And this works. So that's one way to do it. Another thing we can do is, since we are reveling anyway, then we can selectively append a zero, which will then be picked up by the maximum minimum, or it could actually be any other number that we uh, that we add, because it will be that same number minus itself, and then that the range is zero. So how can we do this? Well, we have the condition zero is a member of the shape of this array, and we can see that here. And then we can use this to replicate a zero or any other number. So here we get a zero, but if the array isn't empty, then we get nothing. And we can then append that to the ravel of the array. So now we can write the ravel of the array concatenated with this as a tested function. So here we do not add any zeros, but in an empty array, we do add it to the ravel. 
So now we selectively add a zero when we need it or any other number. It would be, we can use any other number as well. And then we can say the maximum minus the minimum of that. And then that gives us zero. Let's put this back to a zero here. There's no reason to find any other number. So this is another solution. And can we be even cleverer? Yes, because think about it. We want to add a zero if there is a zero in the shape and any other number in the shape we're not interested in only zeros we could even be multiple zeros it wouldn't matter because the maximum and the minimum is not going to change just a bunch of zeros or actually any other number but the important thing is that we add a number or more numbers when there's a zero in the shape so how about just adding all the zeros from the shape okay let's say we have this array two zero uh, zero two reshape zero this is this invisible matrix and then we take the intersection of zero with the shape of this that gives us the zero if our array wasn't empty then there would be nothing there if our array had multiple zeros in its shape then we have the intersection of uh, of a single zero with and uh, all these numbers here including the zeros and so we get that single zero. So we can use this and concatenate this intersection. So we can write the maximum minus the minimum of the ravel concatenated with zero intersection of the shape. And that works. This is probably the most concise uh, way and, and a tacit way of writing it. Um, now, for going a little bit beyond the original quest, uh, quest which was just in a, given a numeric array, um, you, we could choose to understand it as giving any array that consists eventually of atomic numbers. How would that look? Well, um, we could split our matrix into a vector of vectors and um, and now our method is not going to work anymore. We're going to get something completely uh, unrelated to what we were looking for um, because our function just ravels it and that doesn't un, uh, open up the structure. But we do have a function called enlist, which is just like ravel, but more powerful in that it completely takes any array and flattens it out to be a simple vector. So if we take our old solution of the maximum minus the minimum, of the argument and we overtake with one uh, maximum of the length and all of this applied not on the ravel but rather on the enlist now it will work And we can do exactly the same thing with our function up here that uses the intersection. The only important thing is that instead of uh, just using the shape directly, we get rid of this ravel and move outside the whole expression, this enlist. So this is enlist. If there is any sure zero in the intersection with the shape of that enlist, then we concatenate that to the argument, which is the enlisted argument, and then we compute the range as normal. However, at this point, when we've already made the enlist, we don't need to uh, to take the shape at all, we, because we already know that this is a vector. So, and if it's a vector and it's empty, then it must be the empty numeric vector. So we can actually say that if the argument is uh, the empty vector, so if the argument is equivalent to the empty vector, um, then we add another number. So this is an, another way to do it. And we can, but of course, it, it works just fine to say the intersection uh, with the shape or even with the tally uh, would be just fine as well. And that's it. Thank you so much and see you next week.